In this video, we're going to take a look at placing eye features that we've created. On the Manage tab, if I go up to the Insert panel, I'll find two commands I can use to do this. One of them is Insert Eye Feature. The other one is actually a pull down where I can choose from a list of created eye features. This is looking in my eye feature catalog. Now here I'll choose the flange connection. And as a reminder, I have a completed one inside of our working files directory in case you don't have this. So if you have to browse to it, you're gonna wanna use the insert eye feature command instead and browse to your working files directory. For now, I have a completed one here that I will utilize. As you can see, the insert eye feature begins with having me pick positioning references. I'm going to choose my first sketch plane to place this onto. Here I will place it onto the top of this box. Again, this is the placing eye features IPT. Now surface one is my interface of this particular box. So I do have a nice little notation down here that tells me to pick that interface. My termination face is actually the termination for my holes on this eye feature. So I'm also going to pick the interface for that. Now I do have controls here to adjust angle references. So if I would like to adjust this by 30 degrees or 15 degrees off of what it is by default, I can do that. And it will twist it a little bit for me. This little directional arrow here allows it to flip to different sides of that sketch plane depending on how this feature was created. Right now I'm pretty happy with what I have here, so I'll go ahead and select Next. Now it wants me to select the number of holes. Here I'll begin by typing in, let's say, 9. Now 9 shows as an invalid value because it shows in red. Now there's a range limit on here that I kind of have to know because I created this. If not, I'm going to have to keep guessing until I get there. What some users will do when they create eye features is in the prompt, tell you what the range is. So I could have said, enter number of holes between four and eight, which is what this allows. Then I have my pattern angle for which this fills. I'm gonna keep that at 360. I have my OD, and I'm going to adjust that to be 70. And my ID will be 65. It looks like I can't go over 60, maybe 55. And then for my flange height, I have a list of values. So here I can do three, five, or seven. You can also use the refresh button to refresh your preview for what values you're putting into your sizing fields here. I'll click next. And now I have the option for precise positioning. Here I can specify to activate my sketch edit to better control the position of this eye feature on that face. Or I can just go ahead and say, hey, I'll fix it later. Let's just place it in which is what I'm going to do now. So there I said finish, there's my eye feature placed in. If I would like to modify this eye feature for more precise positioning, I can go find it in my tree over here. I do get that special little icon that shows an eye feature. I'll go ahead and expand that plus node and activate my sketch. The other way you can do this is clearly if you wanna do it on the feature, you can say edit eye feature or you can say edit sketch right here. Now I can better control my positioning of this by using standard dimensioning techniques and projected geometry references. So here I'll go ahead and tie this to this back edge over here with a dimension and also line that up. Let me undo that horizontal constraint since my coordinate system is misaligned and add a couple dimensions to my edges instead. and then I'll finish the sketch. So there's my precise positioning for that eye feature. If I wanna go back into the sizing values, here I'll pick the face and choose edit eye feature. Now I can see my different values, which I can adjust again. If I wanna change my positioning or my sizing, that's available to me. How about I change that from five on the height to seven? There you can see it got a little bit taller. Now, if I'd like to place another one, I can do that throughout this design. So maybe I have more entrances on this side over here or on this side over here. But what's really great about this is I didn't have to create four separate features in order to get that particular grouping of features into my design. And it's also repetitive in a form that is consistent across my company. 